But uh, that game is behind us. We're moving on to game two now. It's going to be on Blue Storm. Now, of course, Blue Storm is known as the Zerg map, so we'll have to see if Dynot can uh, can abuse the the slight imbalance in the map and uh, beat Jianfei on this map. Yeah, but he's going to have his work cut out for him. JF is just such a monster, monster player. We saw it that game. I mean, he really played very, very well that game. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go. Hit it, hop it. All right, we got a uh, we got a false start, unfortunately. Yeah, sorry to do that to you, but uh, <laughs> well, uh, just we're gonna talk about Blue Storm for a little bit. It does have that central gully, uh, which of lower ground, and of course, units on the lower ground uh, miss, I believe, thirty percent of the time against units on higher ground. So moving through that gully in the center it really puts you in a difficult position. We often see Zergs open up uh, fast expanding, and then they they fill that gully on their side just with lurkers, and then uh, look to abuse uh, basically ultralis speed, uh, drops, and dark swarm, whereas Protoss players nearly always fast expand, open up with some sort of plus one zealot rush or a bisu build, which is of course Corsairs into Dark Templar, and then uh, they, they typically follow that up by taking their third base and just playing really defensively. And of course, uh, drops are very strong on this map, given the the nature of the map, how difficult it is to move around. So we'll have to see if that becomes a factor on this on this map in this game. All right, so uh, you know this is going to be an exciting map. I always love PVZs here. I'm excited to see what builds they do. So let's get right to it, and uh, please do hit it this time, Hotbid. And here we go, this is the Razor TSL round of 8, day 2. We have JF against Dynot. This is Blue Storm. We have JF in the top right as Protoss. We have Dynot in the bottom left as Zerg. And uh, you know what? JF won that first game. So Dynot is going to have to, you know, come out with everything he has. You do not want to go down 0-2 against JF in a ZVP best of 5, I'll tell you that. His uh, stats are amazing in this matchup. He's one of the very best foreigners at it. And, you know, Dynot is just going to have to try twice as hard this game to take out the win. Yeah, and Dynot is quite young. I, I don't know how old he is. I believe he's 15 or 16, and he is quite uh, green to the game. So that we'll have to see if that becomes a factor, if he does uh, kind of let his emotions rule. I, I know JF did say when he was playing Cloud and he went down 0-1 that he said his heart was beating so fast he could barely play. So, I mean... Nerves do become a factor when there's five thousand dollars on the line, and I mean you do not want to come this close and then be knocked out. Uh, well, so we'll have to see what uh, if Dynot's play is affected by this. It looks like he is going to go for a nine pool, a uh, normal nine pool. We'll have to see if he follows it up with speed or if it's just going to be standard nine pool into expansion. And it looks like it will be a nine pool with speed. This is a really cool opening on this map, Zerg vs Protoss. You know, those speedlings make them make extra cannons. The the uh, Protoss natural is a very wide, uh, very wide natural, so it's hard to cover it with the cannons. And normally you have to bring up some probes, you lose some mining time and whatnot. So it's a very nice uh, opening by Dynot here. And you know, on top of all that, you can really keep the uh, Protoss from scouting you, make him play a little bit blind, and you know these are just some of the things that make it into a good Zerg map. We see now the probe of JF 
being a total devil probe here. He's just attacking drones over and over. Totally annoying for Dinot. Uh, Dinot's drone now. He does have one drone in the red. If JF could kill a drone with this opening probe, that would be really huge at this point. You know, losing a drone so early, especially when you do not such a good economy build as the nine pool speed, that that could uh, really hurt his economy later in the game. But no, JF does lose the probe. So Dinot defends that probe very well there. And uh, JF already going to have to start playing blind. But nope, he is smart. He has snuck out a probe. <laughs> He's making two cannons. That is natural. He has snuck out a probe. He knows what's going on here. He does not want to be playing blind. He wants to be able to scout later. So here he goes, roundabout route around the map. Uh, smart move by JF there. Something to note while JF was harassing with that devil probe, he actually had two idle probes. So, I mean, he just obviously could not keep up with the micro and the multitasking while uh, trying to harass with that. Just played a little bit of an effect on his economy. We can see Dinot has made drones actually and is not continuing to make Zerglings. So, I mean, for those who aren't experienced on Blue Storm, uh, a popular Zerg build is to make 12 Zerglings, get Zergling speed, and run them by the cannons and into the main. And uh, by Dinot showing that he's getting speed with that extractor, uh, he may have made JF think that he's going to try to run by the cannons, but he's only made six Zerglings and he's switching back to an economy build. So a bit of a mind game here. Unfortunately for Dinot, uh, JF has snuck a probe around and it's now going into his main base so he's going to be able to see exactly what's up he's going to be able to see that there's not uh, that many zerglings and that there are drones coming and he probably will not fear uh, too much of for his uh, for the run by uh, he does have these probes pulled off trying to block the obvious run by points just in case uh, Dinot had decided to run speedy zerglings past these probes would just block block that tight and stop probes from running by and you know what, this uh, this little sneak probe that went in, I'm not sure, I'm not too sure that Dinot even saw it, you know, the, the hatchery that's building does not have a very big sight radius, so he may have actually slipped that by without Dinot noticing, and something like that is very powerful, we see that he chooses to scout right now, but uh, the longer he can keep that alive, the better, and Dinot does see it now, yep, he just saw it. So uh, Jeff has blown his own cover on that James Bond probe and the Zerglings are coming back to assassinate him. And meanwhile, Jeff will scout that Dinah is going for a third base, so it looks like it will be another uh, macro style game from Dinah here. We've got uh, an assimilator up for Jeff. Uh, he's coming up to 100 gas, so we're going to have to see if he begins plus one. His cybernetic score has just gone up now. He's got a, uh, a single zealot out uh, from the gateway. Plus one has not started yet. So we may see a Bisu build. If he gets that uh, that second assimilator at his natural, that will be telling that he uh, he will be uh, following up with a Stargate and then, of course, Dark Templar. Another probe trying to sneak out now. I believe the, obs the Overlord would have seen that probe moving around to the center. The Zerglings of Dinot have taken care of the first scouting probe. Now moving out, they are looking for the second scouting probe, and they're going to find that very quickly. Of course, speedy Zerglings uh, able to deal with a probe very easily. Uh, JF trying to trying to put a little dancing show on here, running around, juking left and right. Looks like its probe's going to ha um, be dancing in heaven now as it gets taken out, and uh, looks like we're just settling into uh, to a four hatchery uh, layer play from, uh, from Dinot. And the Stargate is up from, from JF, so he is going to be opening BC. Yeah, and uh, probes don't go to heaven because uh, they're robots, but that's okay. We do see that he is going to be doing this Bisu build, and the Bisu build, of course, is that uh, the Dark Templar with the Corsair. And what is he going to try to do with it? Well, you know, if he can clear out some overlords, it's going to contain the Zerg a little bit. He's going to have to get overlord speed. And we're going to see JF trying to sneak that those Dark Templars in everywhere. You know, he's going to want to jump in, kill as many drones as he can anywhere, whether it's through the the little tiny choke going into the natural or just running around the side of the mineral only base uh, you never really know but uh, we see now oh nice this may not in fact be the beast who bill I'm sorry it looks like JF is getting a robotics facility so we may be seeing something more along the lines of Reaver Sayer, a, a little bit older build but still very very effective he's gonna want to do a lot of harassing with that and you know also it's it's quite a safe build the Reaver a very good defensive and offensive unit yeah, this uh, this is a build that Bisu kind of put together specifically for this map. It looks like the Bisu build in that you open Corsairs, clear out all the scouting overlords, but he's going to get a Reaver. He's probably going to try to take that 12 o'clock base right afterwards. Uh, 
and just the the really small choke makes it very difficult for uh, for other units to come in and clear that out once cannons are up and once there's a reaver back there. So if that does get secured, that could put Dynod in a really annoying and frustrating position. We can see Overlord's speed is about half done, and uh, Hydralis speed is about done on his Hydralis. Uh, and he is just killing the scouting probe once again at top left with a few zerglings, just really focusing on his economy. And he actually is sending a drone to top left right now, so he isn't afraid of Dark Templar, strange enough. Uh, he's trying to take that base without having Overlord speed, a bit of a ballsy move, but it is going to pay off, given that JF did not open Dark Templar. That is true. Uh, it's a little bit odd to see that because it does look like a Dark Templar build. But uh, we see that JF right now, he is getting shuttle speed. So, uh, you know, I'm getting a little bit excited here because JF, he is a master of the shuttle, as you said earlier, Chill. I mean, this kid, he has amazing reaver micro, amazing shuttle micro. He never loses a reaver or shuttle. It's just, it's wild. And to see him uh, go against these awesome micro uh, hydras of Dino is going to be very exciting. And we see now Dynot bringing about a group of Hydras down. He's going to see what he can pick off over here. You know, if he can maybe get in the way of that forge and pick it off or something like that. And it looks like he may be going for a bust here. He's targeting a cannon. And will he, he, he will get it. A bunch of probes coming off with the Zealots. Jeff's got to be very careful here. These amazing Hydras of Dynot are going to be very hard to stop. And it looks like he wants to pick off this forge next. But a Reaver Scarab comes in and kills a bunch of Hydras. So, well, uh, you know, that was actually pretty good by Dynot. He now knows exactly what Jeff is doing. He's going Reaver Scare. And that information is going to be very valuable to Dynot later on. So the first Reaver loaded up, going to move out. He's got a, a Zealot and a Reaver in the shuttle moving out. He also has tech to Templar Archives. And he's uh, getting he's getting a zealot leg speed, and he's adding gateways, and we can notice he's not making corsairs anymore. So just I think he was trying to take this 12 o'clock base. Unfortunately, by Dynot moving in and realizing the reaver is out, uh, Dynot now knows that uh, JF wants that base, and he's probably not going to let him take it. He's got uh, quite a few hydralists just up around there. He's got an overlord scouting it out, and JF could be in a bit of trouble here, uh, given that he can't take that base now. He's building up quite a bit of gas. Uh, the Templar Archives has finished. Storm is beginning. Uh, Templar is being made. And the second Reaver is out and going to be loaded into the shuttle. I believe uh, shuttle speed is done. Yes, it is. And we're going to have to see what uh, JF can do with this with this speedy Reaver to get, get back in the game. He's a little behind right now. We see that uh, the Hydra's going down, just picking things off left and right, left and right. He dances those Hydra's very well. And JF, he's trying to bust out now. He's going to want to take that third base pretty quickly here. And JF is not going to be able to do as much harassment maybe as he wanted because uh, Dynot is just keeping the pressure on, keeping it on and on and on. And as long as he does that, those Reavers are going to have to stay more defensive. But we see JF now, he's going to move out with his entire army. He wants blood, and here he goes. He has the speed zealots. The Hydras come up. They have a nice range around it. The Reavers drop out. He has to get some nice Scarabs here. A nice first Scarab. Takes out two. The Zealots just picking off Hydras. He does not have enough Hydras here. He runs him in, tries to kill this Reaver, but no, it gets picked up by JF. He says, sup, I don't lose Reavers. And more Hydras try to come in from this side, but it just does not work. And JF, with most of his uh, force still there, one Red Reaver, but both Reavers still alive, Shuttle still alive, and quite a few Speed Zealots. So uh, he definitely came out on top of that battle, and we see he's already in a big lead on supply, 93 to 55 supply. It looks like he wants to bust through here, dropping the Reavers behind the natural of Dynot, killing some drones, just one so far, killing that sunken very easily, it looks like. And uh, the Hydras start coming in. It looks like it may be time to run away. And where'd the shell go? I don't know. But uh, if the shell doesn't come back, the Reavers are going to die. And he does lose a couple Reavers, but many, many Hydras going down there. It was a very nice attack by JF, despite losing those Reavers. He did kill a lot of Hydras. And I mean, even though uh, JF is only on two bases, whereas Dynot is on four, we can see the supply is uh, 61 for Dynot, whereas it's 75 for JF. So he is very much in this game. Two scouting probes coming out now. Uh, Dynot actually does have burrow research. There were a few burrowed hydralists at 12 o'clock. I uh, don't know where they are now, but uh, Jeff is going to send this probe around. He's going to see that 12 o'clock is taken and be able to adjust his game plan uh, to, to counter that. You can see he's making tons of dragoons now just in preparation to be fighting lurkers, which of course is a standard follow-up to hydralist play as a, as a zerg player. Tons of lurkers out now for... Uh, for Dynot moving in towards the third base, but we can see there's a ton of cannons there. Templar, nothing is going to get done there. Uh, Dark Templar just kind of harassing the Hydralis now, uh, forcing the Hydralis back towards the natural, 
uh, as they wait for uh, an overlord to give them detection sight. And we see that uh, JF is actually switching strategies now. Uh, it looks like he's stopped Corsairs, he's stopped uh, Reavers, he's stopped any sort of shuttles. He's getting his goon range now, he's pumping a lot of Dragoons, he's starting to pop out some High Templars. And, you know, this is a very good strategy for him to switch into. The Reaver, you know, it didn't work out too, too well, but he did do some damage with it at least. And this is, you know, he's done several tech switches so far. And this is a really good one here. We see a, a Lurker contain going up above third base of the JF here. But with so many Dragoons and High Templars, that will not be something that he's going to be afraid of. He's going to be able to break through there pretty easily. Just waiting for an Observer. That Lurker is hitting a bunch of probes. Jeff's going to have to be careful. A couple get skewered there. He's waiting for that cannon to go up to give him sight. Waiting for an Observer to come out. Observer is up now. And uh, Dynod is working on three Evolution Chambers. This is kind of a throwback to the old school Seron build where you just make tons of units with tons of upgrades and basically flood the map. Uh, Dynot looks like he could take 12 o'clock. He's moving a few Hydros to take out the probes at this point. And uh, looks like that Lurker is going to get stormed. Dragoon comes in to finish it off. Very nice play by Jeff, using those two units in combination to kill a Lurker very quickly. And, uh, I mean, the Contain, although it's, it's not able to hit the probes anymore, it is alive and well. Jeff is going to have a lot of trouble if he tries to rush up that ramp, fighting those, those Lurkers up uphill. It looks like he is uh, positioning to move up. He's moving his entire army up and uh, Dynod is trying to stall waiting for these lurkers to finish. He now realizes it. Storm goes off on the first lurker. That goes down almost instantly. And it looks like Dynod snipes the two observers. Both observers down. This lurker has free uh, uh, free rain hitting tons of units. Storm goes off on a bunch of lurkers and it looks like Jeff is just caught in between a few lurkers without observers. But he has essentially broken out. All he needs to do is wait for another observer and he has reclaimed his high ground. Jeff showing great micro yet again in that, uh, that particular situation. Oh, definitely. Jeff is looking in very good shape here. He's bringing another observer through. Dinot did a good job at sniping those, but I mean, the Dragoon Templar combo is just so good against these Lurker contains that Jeff does not have much more he can do here. And we see that Jeff is uh, pulling ahead of Dinot in supply. He's got 136 right now against. Uh, Dinot's 103, so JF looks like he is starting to take uh, control of this game. It looks like he is getting some map dominance here. He's moving his army up towards 12 o'clock. There is no base up there yet. He probably wants to check that out real quick and go around to the top left base. If he can kill that, it's going to be even bases, and even bases ZVP, you do not want to see that. So JF, he's just looking very strong. His build is a very good counter to what Dinot's doing, but Dinot, he's still making some lurkers. Might be a little bit of a mistake here, and nice uh, the lurkers burrow, but a nice storm goes off. He just starts killing all these lurkers, and all that is left of uh, Dino's army is some lings and hydras. Storms going off all over the place. Uh, Jeff just has too many units here. The dragoons cleaning up the hydras that are left over. They're trying to pick off that archon before it morphs in, and they do, which is important because he's going to have to make more and more zerglings to counter these dragoons. He does not want those archons around, but I. Uh, Jeff right now, he definitely has map control. He's rallying more and more units out. We see him starting more speed zealots because they run much quicker. They go through that little choke. They can get up to his army quicker. And in the meantime, Jeff is not slacking at home. He's taking the bottom right base. So he's going to tie up the base count. And things are starting to really look in his favor. Yeah, we don't see a Queen's Nest yet out for, uh, for Dinot. So that, that could be a, a mistake. He's going to need that Hive player if he wants that plus three armor. And despite JF opening up with that Reaver build, he already has plus two attack. And that is critical because Dinot only has plus one carapace. Looks like JF is taking the small bridge down now to the west uh, side of the map. He can try to drive in to uh, either south into the third expansion or north into the fourth expansion. So this position gives him a lot of options. He is going north. Not a lot of defense there for Dinot. He just has uh, three sunken colonies, a handful of Zergons, a handful of Hydralis. Looks like he was moving into the middle of the map, just positioning to possibly counter. Now he realizes where JF's army is. He's bringing it back, streaming everything back. But this hatchery is going to get taken out. Sniper Storm goes up, killing a ton of Hydralis. This hatchery is going to get taken out. And now uh, we're going to have to see if Dynot has the, uh, the ability to just group up and, and not run into a bunch of storms. There goes the first storm. Second storm, tons of units getting taken out. Uh, but a good flank coming from Dynot, he will save the hatchery actually, which I find very surprising given how long uh, JF's army was there. But of course all the drones are dead and JF is mining at bottom right, so he's looking in a very good position at this point. 
Yeah, that was a very good save though by Dino. I was sure that Hatchery was going down, and uh, it did live about 350 health left. I'm very surprised at that. But you know, Dino re reacted really quickly and saved that. Very nice move by him there. But look at back at home, JF. He has a lot of units again already. His macro is just right on top of things. He has under 300 minerals at just about every time. And he has just a huge, huge army. And when Dinot sees this, it is going to hurt him inside because this is going to be extremely hard to pull off. And now JF attacking the perfect spot. Lurker's not done yet. Engaging the Zerglings. Zerglings falling down. Nice storm. Kills a lot of Zerglings. A lot of Hydras with that. And oh my, another storm goes off. And he's just ripping through the units that Dinot has left. Jeff is looking very good right now. And I do not know if Dinot can possibly come back from this. Dinot keeps on losing his armies. The two lurkers go down as soon as they're done making. And Dinot, do you even have enough hatches to stop this? I'm not too sure. Jeff going towards the north part of the map. Looks like he wants that hatchery again. He knows it's low in health. And he, he knows that he should have killed it before. So here he goes. Quite a few units now. He's got about three high templars. A bunch of speed zealots with some dragoons mixed in there. It looks like there's not not enough units up here yet, but Dinot bringing what he has. He has about three or four lurkers coming up with some hydras and lings. And here we go. He's starting to attack into these Morphin Creek colonies. And the Zerglings are just getting slaughtered. JF's upgrades are too, too good. A nice storm going off there, killing a couple lurkers. And JF, he has that plus three attack, plus one carapace against it. Just one one of Dinot. And this expansion will fall quite easily. Yeah, it looks like JF is just in the process of cleaning up here. Uh, Dinot just unfortunately did not have enough units to defend that. Uh, just really the culmination of, of small battles throughout the entire game. JF is going to clean that up and it looks like he should be able to clean up straight into the third base of uh, Dinot. He doesn't have his hive tech done yet. He's trying to get uh, plus two, plus two, but of course we all know that's not really going to matter at this point. JF's minerals, I have never seen them go above a thousand. If you want to play a terrible drinking game, take a drink every time JF gets above 1500 minerals. You'll be sober by the end of the night. And uh, we see a ton of Zerglings here at the third base for uh, for uh, <laughs> for uh, Dinot. Unfortunately, his uh, adrenaline upgrade is not finished. And uh, I mean, he's just rolling. Jeff is just rolling, and he's got two Reavers now uh, supplementing his army. They're just going to drop at the at the top of the ramp. And uh, oh, the Scourge actually takes it out. But I mean, it's a little too too little too late. And uh, Jeff is just in the process of cleaning up here. Moving in, basically an attack move is going to finish this game up. And uh, Dinot is really going to have to get something done here in game three. Uh, Jeff just looks basically unbeatable as, as so far. Yeah, Jeff, this is just, look at this, he's just slaughtering what Dinot has left. Dinot is definitely dead here. Uh, I'm sure he's going to tap out any moment. There we go, GG. Jeff takes the lead in this series. He is up 2-0 in a best of five. So, I mean, a very commanding position here. And Jeff totally showing his skill. You know, this game, he even showed it more than game one. So I think, you know, he's getting warmed up. And if Dinot beats him game three, I'm going to be very impressed. Yeah, I think um, Jeff's storms have been particularly on point. Uh, and given that Dinot seems to favor both Hydralisk upgrades and a, kind of a Hydra Lurker uh, early and mid game and then switching over to Lurker Ling kind of throughout the late mid game, uh, that seems to play into JF's hands quite a bit. Uh, I, I'd like to see him open up Lurker Ling and see, see if that works better against the Dragoon heavy army of JF. Of course JF would adapt, but uh, I mean, I, I just don't see Hydralisk Lurker being able to work against Jeff's incredible storms so far. Yeah, I, I gotta agree with you there. His storms are all over the place. Uh, they, you know, Dinot, I mean, he dodged a few storms extremely well with his Hydralisk Micro, but it just, it's not enough against Jeff. Jeff is just a total package player. It, it's hard to imagine anyone beating him. He's just playing so well.